Hello, everyone, and welcome back to Kenny Conversation, brought to you by JEGS, the leader in high-performance aftermarket car parts. Remember to go to JEGS.com for everything you need to fix your vehicles up. I'm super excited about this one because this is a little different. He's not a race car driver, but he rides with the race car drivers in just about every single race. The owner of Off Axis Paint, my dear friend from Missouri, Greg Stump. Greg, how you doing? I'm I'm doing good, buddy. I actually I miss Missouri and I'm I'm jealous you're there all the time now, but uh it's it's not bad. North Carolina's the same as you left it, so I can't complain out here. Well, we're going to talk a lot about you, but let's get this show started right. Everybody's like, who is Greg Stump? What is off axis paint? So uh, I'm, I'm hold on. I'm the kid. Go ahead. Go I'm, ahead. The, I'm the kid in school. I got props. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> this, my friends. That's this, it right there. That's all Greg you need to know. Stump. Yeah. Okay, so we're going to talk about your company in a minute, but I'm going to turn this helmet a little bit and you just talk a little bit and then we're going to get into you, Greg, but uh, go ahead and start talking about this helmet. So I don't, I, off axis is obviously custom helmet paint, right? But, um, you know, we're here in North Carolina and that kind of gives us access, you know, a little bit different than most helmet paint shops where, you know, I, it's pretty personable. Um, you know, every one of them, like the one you're showing here, you love the Cardinals, obviously, and the, and the St. Louis Blues and everything about it. So it's what it's cool about my job is that guys can just swing in here and stop by, you know, on a Tuesday or Wednesday when they're not at the track um, and be able to really go over these helmets and make it something unique, you know, something you love about it. Yeah, that's something we don't do here in asphalt racing that I do miss. <laughs> OK, so. Uh... We got that out of the way. Now, listen, uh, there's a lot of people on podcasts right now, and, and you didn't see it. But yeah. what we just did, we took we took our St. Louis Cardinal helmet that you made for me, personally made for me. And we're going to talk about it in a minute. But, uh, okay, that was a little bit of show and tell. Yeah, and, uh, I love it. Yeah, that's the way we start the show. That's fun. All right, great, yeah. great stump. I know where you're from, but uh, rank order serial number – I know all about you, but tell everybody where you're from. Yeah, so a little bit different than St. Louis. I'm a, I'm at the bottom of Missouri, and uh, you know, down in Branson, country music capital, down there. Um, but yeah, I mean, I, I just started, you know, with the airbrush at like the age of 14. You know, so it's really the only thing I've ever really done. You know, I've, I've had one other job, I think, other than painting, uh, and it didn't work out, obviously. So, um, I was just really lucky, you know, early in my career or high school uh, days, I had a really great art teacher, Matt Locke, you know, who I still talk to almost daily, you know, just getting advice on art and, and running and stuff like that. So, you know, being able to start out, you know, a freshman in high school and somebody give you an airbrush and my art skills weren't amazing, you know, at, at any cost like that, but I definitely had the drive for it, the passion. I, I liked it. And and once I really started like honing in on that talent and that, you know, figuring out I could do this and make a little money or, you know, it wasn't just helmets. It was motorcycles and, you know, murals and in elementary schools and children's hospitals, um, you know, and then being from Missouri, uh, we got all these theme parks down in Branson. So all, all summer long, you're painting T-shirts like, you, you know, at the beach, you know, getting the, you know, Branson, Missouri, Spring Break. I don't know why anyone would go to go to Spring Break in Branson, but. Uh, you know, you got really good at your talent, just you know, doing that 10,000 hours, uh, getting really good at it. And then I was fortunate enough, you know, to meet people like you early on in my career that kind of springboarded it. And, uh, you know, I was shipping stuff back and forth from, from Missouri all the time. And then, you know, 12, 13 years ago, I just loaded it all in a U-Haul and, and moved out here. I have a, uh, I have five grandbabies and my oldest one, her name is Charlotte. We call her Lottie. And of course, we use Snapchat a lot. And my oldest daughter, Brooke, is always showing me Lottie uh, is seven, but she's she's got this program where she kind of traces, but she loves art. Yeah. And, and here she is seven years old and she's already 
drawing Mickey Mouse or Minnie Mouse. And I quizzed her just yesterday. And she says, I want to do art. And I said, really? So as you're talking, I'm thinking about her. Uh, so yeah, when you first started, were you freehand? Or what did you first start at when you were dealing in art as a child? Um, I mean, I wasn't really great. I was really into music. My, you know, growing up, I was in the arts. And it's weird because my my family is like not anywhere like that at all. You know, my, my dad's got a little bit of artistic, you know, background, but not like, you know, as a career, you know, so I don't know really where, where it came from. I just kind of found I was decent at it. And then I just kind of surrounded myself with other artists. And, and like I said, if you have that drive for it, the passion, um, you know, I was at the high school. I mean, I can't tell you how many times my high school janitor was like, Hey, lock up when you leave. And it's, you know, midnight and I'm still sitting in the art room you know, still doing projects, you know, I, I don't think you can do that anymore. They probably will kick you out, you know, at, at three o'clock, but I was just really, really lucky to grow up in a small town and, and have a really great art teacher, like I said, um, you know, and then parents that kind of let me, let me do that too, you know, and didn't really, um, you know, say much about it or, you know, they loved it too. But when I, when I first moved out here, they were a little, little hesitant on letting me move out here. They didn't think I was going to, you know, have a full career in this. It was still a hobby back then. Um, and then to, you know, to prove them wrong a couple, couple years down the road is, is pretty cool. And they're, they're very supportive now, obviously, but, um, you know, just being around the right people, you know, right time. And, and really when I first started going, even with the helmets, you know, I didn't think helmet paint was even a career or even on, you know, it's not something on career day that they really talk about, or it's not on the test that you take to be a, a plumber or electrician or anything you know, like that. So, um, you know, to really start out and kind of figure my way was, was really pretty rough. Um, but it was something I love to do. And I, I kind of had this whole shop in my mind always and, uh, you know, just hard work and, and all nighters. I mean, you know how hard we work in the shop. So, um, if you, if you want it and you can, you kind of dream it up, you can pretty much do whatever you whatever you want. And I'm, I'm pretty much proof of that. I think. I was thinking about the headlines, you know, how Charlie Marlowe and myself were going to present this on YouTube or on social media. And my, my mind, my mind has just changed. You, you just changed <laughs> me. I, I was going to put who paints all the NASCAR helmets. Yeah. And, and, but, you know, I, as you're talking, I, I think of this phrase that I was taught years ago. Uh, and it's so profound. Men. Now, listen. I'm a girl dad. I have three daughters, but specifically men are 32 years old and don't know what they want to do in life. Here you were a teenager, the janitor saying, Hey, everybody's left the school. You're still in here. So at an early age, you kind of knew what you wanted to do. Is that right? Yeah. I mean, I, kn I knew what path I wanted to go down. Right. And then it yeah. kind of just changes and evolves um, and you kind of just ride that wave, you know, I'm, I'm, yeah, I'm good at art, but you know, in five more years, they could say, you know, no more helmet paint. It's too heavy. We're only going to wrap them like we do the race cars, you know, and then I got to figure out pivot. Okay. Where do I go now? You know, so you're always kind of figuring out, okay, yeah, we're good at one thing, but how do we keep, you know, being successful at that and keep growing and, you know, like it's, I think about pinstripe artists all the time, the old hot rod guys who can, you know, throw down a line. You know, 30, 40 years ago, yeah, that's it's awesome. But now you just print it out of a computer. So, um, you know, you're, you're always kind of not scared, but you're you're always trying to figure out how to evolve with the times and and, uh, you know, put your artwork in the best place possible. So, I'll, you know, luckily enough, it's pretty hard to wrap a helmet and, a, you know, be in a bowling ball. Um, and it's it's pretty cool, you know, still to the drivers to have that personal piece since everything else is pretty much taken over by sponsors. So. You know, it's, I equate it to just like a, a, a hockey goalie with their mask or, a, you know, a first baseman with their glove. Um, you know, it's still just that cool piece that the driver can be a part of. So as, lo as long as that's still involved, I think we're pretty safe. But, um, you know, things in racing change every day. So as long as we can keep doing art and, and enjoying ourselves, I'm, I'm all for it. Man, this, this is going places I didn't. <laughs> I, that, listen, you just, you just gave me so much to talk about oh, right perfect. there. No, you really did. It was fantastic because this is a message to all the kids 
And I always tell my daughters, go and do, and you're going to meet people. Yeah. So what you're saying is you were an artist. You didn't know where you were going with it. And one of your messages is the message I have. If you have passion, just do it and you're going to find your place. So, you know, like you said, you're in Branson, Missouri, the capital of country music. Millions of fans go down there. Yeah. They ride roller coasters. They play golf. And here you are, your path. You rode the wave. Yeah. You rode the wave. And uh, now look at you go. Yeah. So after, after high school, that's when I really, you know, got into the dirt racing, you know, cause in the Midwest it's, there's no asphalt racing, which is fine. So, um, I, I read, the- I read your bio by the way, dirt cars. <laughs> I love them. There's nothing better. I know you're a modified guy, but there's nothing better than an open dirt late model, you know, hauling ass down the back straight away, you know? Yeah. Yeah. Well, you know what? You're like me. Uh, let's, let's do this. Okay. So, uh, I, I'm I'm a mod guy, but that's I, it right there, but, bud. But no, but I wanted the super light models. Uh, Bring the prelude back. That's what I. That's yeah, all I want to say. Yeah. Here. So we educate people. So yeah, I started in the dirt super light models. You know, won the prelude to the dream. I love it. Bring won, it back. One Cleveland, but then went down and outrun Ronnie Johnson in Cleveland, <laughs> uh, Tennessee, and then I said, you know what? I'm 44 years old. I want to go to modifieds. Yeah. So here I was in the middle of my NASCAR career, right? At the highest form of motorsports, winning nine Xfinity races. And I kept kind of finding myself doing what was good for me. Yeah. You know, winning late model races, you know, $130,000 race cars. I'm like, that's ridiculous. Let's, let's go to the mods. Let's go to the mods. Okay. So my point is we kind of, got the same path here. You know, you could have said, Hey, uh, you know, I want to go to Hollywood. You know, I want to go to where they're building all these motorcycles, you know, Jesse James. See what I'm saying? Yeah. There's a lot of different paths I could have, I could have taken for sure. So that's, that's um, my point. I could have stayed super light models, but yeah. I, I'm going to go mods. Yeah. So I got, I got linked up right out of high school with my buddy, Will Vaught and we're, the, we're the same age and that's kind of when his career was going up. So I, I wasn't really doing much. I just kind of wanted to travel and I knew I wanted, I loved racing. So I, you know, I jumped in the toter home and we traveled all over the country. I mean, we've been to every, every track you've been to, you know, like every, every summer nationals race, every Lucas race, we've, we've done them all. So doing that, you know, that's, I really started to meet people. I would be taking helmets home, you know, meeting people on the weekends, taking them home, paint them on the weekdays. And then when we travel back, everyone, you know, meets up. Um, you know, I get a couple extra hundred bucks for doing, you know, cool helmets and every once in a while I'll make it on the speed channel. And it was, it was just cool, you know? And then, uh, you know, as, as he was going up and doing some Arca racing and getting in the asphalt stuff, um, you know, I just continued to meet more and more people. And then, you know, Facebook was coming out and, you know, nobody just had their, their social media girl or, or guy. They, the drivers ran their own social media, right? So I just started firing off messages to everybody. <laughs> yep. um, you know, hey, let me paint your helmet. I'm this kid from Missouri. You know, luckily guys like you and, and Mark Martin and, you know, David Reagan, Justin Allgaier, all those guys were really pivotal on just, you know, sending me a helmet and giving me a chance, you know, and that's that's how I got going is just I, I would love racing and that's and I was good at art. Okay, how do we marry these two together? And, and the helmet was you know, the puzzle piece that was missing, basically. Yeah, I, I let, let's wrap it up like this, Greg. Uh, we know there's so much more to you. We're getting ready to go there right now, but <laughs> let, let's let's wrap this up. You are where you're at right now, but there's that story you want to tell the 10-year-old artist, hey, listen, I just didn't show up here. You won't, yeah. be, you won't believe my journey. So we had to lay that platform out. You're great now, but you weren't, and, and neither was I. Yeah. And I think your story is incredible. I think it will inspire a lot of people. Thank you for telling us how you started. What I'm going to hear out of all this <laughs> is everybody went home from school and you stayed there and the janitor said, turn the lights off. Yeah. They actually, they actually gave me the key to the art room <laughs> and they rekeyed the whole school. They gave me the actual art room key because they knew, uh, you know, how much it would mean to me. That, 
That means the world to me. It's okay, li- listen, that, that's fantastic. So what's great about Kenny conversation is we go everywhere, but because of everything you said, we have a lot of pictures about you. So we're going to be dropping a lot of pictures in as we talk. So Perfect. 2010-ish, uh, one of your very first helmets. Here we are. We're dropping the picture in right now. Looks like you're handing one of your very first painted helmets to J.J. Yaley. Yeah. Tell me about this picture. Uh, you're giving J.J. Yaley a helmet on pit road. Yeah, so this is... This is like big time me here. You know, this is when I finally made it, I think. You know, this is before I moved to North Carolina. And, you know, just being on pit road and being able to hand a real cup driver, you know, your first helmet. Um, how, did you your, like, how did you get your pit pass? How did you get, get in? I, I think Brian Patty actually got me a pit pass. Because <laughs> I, I had known his sister from dirt racing, another networking yes. situation. Um, you know, so I, I, you know, JJ doesn't give me a pit pass to this day, so he definitely didn't get it for me, but, um, <laughs> no, I owe a lot to JJ. He was cool. And, you know, it was when he was coming back from an injury in dirt racing and, you know, just kind of running in the back, but I was so pumped to know, you know, on that prompter, when their names are scrolling across in position, I was like, you know, we got a helmet in the, in the race, you know, does, does he have a chance of winning? Probably not, but. It was just it was the coolest thing to me to know, and I, you know, was painting for a cup driver, you know? Yeah. Okay, so now this is where we're going to keep everybody excited and interesting. Uh, we're going to show another one of my helmets, and then we're going to go to you. We're going to go back to you about this year's 2024 Daytona 500, but not right now. <laughs> All right. I've That's always fun. known I've always known you, but... Um, I was, you know, announced, I announced my retirement. I was going to run one last race. Oh, yeah. I remember this helmet. That's a good so, one. So 2015, my daughters, my daughters, Brooke, Brandy, and Brittany, they get a hold of you. Yep. And I'm going to drive for Joe Gibbs Racing, and your job is to make a helmet celebrating my career. So you designed the last helmet I ever wore in NASCAR and up. Uh, Tell me about this helmet. Obviously, we had U.S. sell it, but this this is unbelievable. Yeah. So this is these are my favorite projects. You know, when everyone asks, almost every interview is, "What's your favorite helmet?" All right. Well, I don't have one because I try to make them all, you know, the best. You know. So if you're not evolving as an artist, you know, you get out of the kitchen, right? So when stuff like this comes across that I know, you know, is going to be a little misty eye for everyone and really have some meaning and really that, that's going to be the the helmet you put on the shelf for the rest of your, you know, career and life. Um, you know, I, I take that pretty seriously and want to make sure that it is, you know, it's still a helmet, but it's just a really cool piece of artwork. And as I'm, you know, going through all these photos, obviously you don't know about the helmet, right. And they're, they're contacting me. So, I'm going through all these old pictures of your career and it's just cool to spend because I'm I mean, every one of these helmets takes me 30, 40 hours. It's not like a print and it goes out the door. So the more you're looking at this thing all all week, you know, oh man, this is cool. I've never seen this picture. I, I wonder what the story is behind this. So, you know, when you get it done, then you're like, man, I can't wait till it gets to this thing because I got a million questions to ask him about all these pictures, you know. So I think those are the most meaningful projects you know, that we do. Yeah. Um, it's definitely my favorite, you know, when, when, when there's some emotion in the artwork, I, that's my, that's my favorite thing. You know, you can do lines and make sponsors happy all day, but you know, doing that kind of stuff, um, you know, it means a lot. I want to thank you for that. That, that helmet meant the world to me. You said what I thought you would say that helmet is still very personal Yeah. to me this day. Uh, thank you so much. Uh, when I got that, it definitely, uh, that's my whole, that's my whole career on, on one helmet. Yeah. And uh, how do you do that? But you did it. Okay. So you are, we, we've established an emotional helmet. We've established the Cardinal helmets, a lot of fun, but time for me to brag on you a little bit. Uh, I've done nothing interesting. I promise. You've done so much <laughs> interesting. So now this is where Charlie Marlowe is going to drop this most incredible picture uh, of William Byron 
on the front straightaway. This year's 2024 Daytona 500 winner. Charlie is dropping this pitcher. William Byron has his head as if he's saying a prayer. Um, you won the Daytona 500. Your helmet was on William Byron's head. Tell me about winning the Daytona 500 this year. He wins the race. What's going through your mind when, when you win the Daytona 500 as the helmet painter? Yeah, I was going to say, I don't, I don't think I won the Daytona 500, but it is, uh, you know, I, I get a bunch of texts, you know, congratulations. <laughs> you were definitely the team. Like, I didn't do anything, you know, but <laughs> if anything, I slowed them down, putting all the, that paint on the helmet, you know? So um, I think it's cool. Just, you know, like I said, going back to that JJ Yaley picture of just, you know, having a helmet in the race and knowing that, okay, you paint for professional athletes. And then, you know, we've had a helmet in that race for 15 years and, you know, we've come close and we've won some super speedways. We've never actually had a driver win the 500. So, um, you know, have a kid like William and not a kid anymore, but he's a kid. Yeah. Well, he came to our shop when we were in a storage unit still, you know, and, and he was a K and N driver. Um, and he had never had his helmet painted. He didn't know, you know, what he wanted or anything like that. And, and we made him something really cool back then. So to have someone like William, you know, wear your helmets through his entire career, and then, you know, he wins the biggest race of his entire life, uh, you know, gets out with your helmet on. He doesn't just throw it in the car. He actually climbs out on the roof with your helmet on. It's like, man, that's, it's really cool feeling for me, you know, and, and that's everyone. That's a whole part of that team is, you know, they, they win the 500. It's, it's awesome. No matter what small part it is, you know, that you're contributing. And, uh, you know, I'm from St. Louis, Missouri. You're from Branson, Missouri. You're three and a half hours from here is where you grew up. And I'm thinking to myself, uh, as you, as I'm looking at these pictures, I'm thinking, once again, I'm thinking about, you know, the, the janitor in, in, in high school. And here yeah. you are now, Daytona 500 winning helmet. Now, Charlie's going to drop another picture in here. What's next? What we uh, got? This is all the helmets that you had in the Daytona 500. What do we see here? Three, six, nine, twelve. A lot, a lot of personalities is what you see there, honestly. <laughs> yeah, you you have a a lot of helmets in the Daytona 500, so you had a lot of chances. Uh, I guess it's kind of like gambling, right? You know, yeah. you have all these helmets in there, just hoping one of them uh, becomes a Daytona 500. So, uh, yeah, from from <laughs> from from a janitor uh, in you know, telling you to turn the lights out and here you are celebrating the Daytona 500 win and all these drivers wearing your helmets. What, what did it feel like? Were you at the Daytona 500? I, I was, I was there to watch it rain. And then, uh, unfortunately I had some Atlanta helmets to do. So I had to go back and, uh, I watched both races here at the shop on Monday. So it was a bummer not to be there, but, um, you know, I, I doubt I would have felt fought the crowd to get a picture with William anyway. So, but he did send me a picture of the ring, you know, from the plane that night flying to flying to New York. So I thought that was pretty cool, you know, he, that he, you know, at least texted me back and that we've had such a good, you know, friendship and personalities, you know, on his helmets over all these years. So, um, you know, it couldn't have happened to a nicer kid and, and I'm glad he was our first Daytona 500 winner. You know, it's, it's a really cool thing for the shop. That's incredible. So, that helmet that won the Daytona 500, does he save it or do you build him another helmet to run the very next week? Where, where is the Daytona 500? That's a, that's a good question. I've already, um, you know, we got to paint a couple replicas of it for, you know, a couple of sponsors of Hendrick, but um, I'm sure that one will go to the Hall of Fame and then, you know, put on his on his shelf for the rest of the time. So the other part of that is really cool. You know, it did start with just me you know, moving out here. And like I said, I worked out of a, a little storage unit and everything, but now, you know, I have a whole team surrounding me. So, you know, I'm, I'm not the one that painted William's helmet, you know, Mike and Ryan and Noel, all the guys in the shop, you know, they take those wins very serious, you know, and, and we've always, you know, we've always had like a sticker system of like who can get the most wins in the, in the year. <laughs> uh, you know, so when, when one of our guys wins and, and sees their stuff on TV, it's a, it's the same feeling I got when I, you know, first, started painting NASCAR helmets. So it's, it's just cool that, yeah, I did start this, but now I have just this team of artists who are just amazing, you know, that can outpaint me, you know, most days. And I tell everybody it's like a tattoo shop when you walk in here, you know, that's, 
this artist is really good at one thing and this person's, you know, great at another. Um, and, and then being in town, you know, the guys start stopping in and then, you know, William might come in and he's got his guy, Mike might paint every single one of his helmets and he, he loves his style. And it's just a cool vibe in this shop to, to really be personable with everybody. I know I keep saying that, but, no, um, it. but yeah, it really is. You know, I, it's not like we, you know, live back in Missouri and we're just shipping stuff. And I just see people over email. I think it's just really just people stopping in and wanting to be a part of, you know, what we're doing instead of just saying, Oh, paint my helmet blue, you know? Yeah. Let me paint the picture. Exactly. For everybody right now. I'm going to, I'm going to give, you know, everybody listening, my truth. I come in your place. I come into off access. I right where you're at right now. I've been in your office right there. It's fun. Uh, yeah. You, 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 you have this artist feel when you go in, it's not like a business. It's like there's pictures, there's all these things. Then we go in. Now, what we're going to do now is we're going to have Charlie, Charlie, let's grab this picture where all the helmets are on the shelf. We got all these black ones up oh, on yeah. top. We got all the white ones in the middle and they're, they're all, it looks like maybe they're sanded. Yeah. They're, they're taped off. And then when I'm in your shop, you usually have names on these helmets. Tell us, uh, it looks to me like there's maybe 50 helmets here. Tell me about this picture we're looking at now. So that's, that's current day, right? So yeah. when, when I moved here, you know, I, I was painting for about seven or eight people and, and uh, that's basically, if you're going to send me a helmet right now, that's, that's the wait list of helmets on the shelf. <laughs> and you can't see, what you can't see is about 30 more in boxes that are, you know, behind that. So like I said, it's, you know, you never know when it's going to stop and you, you want to work as hard as you can. But for right now, we're, we're extremely fortunate to have, you know, plenty of work for the, the four of us that are painting helmets here. Going to, uh, Charlie, let's, let's drop, uh, Martin Truex Jr. picture in here. This is a, this is a helmet on top of, uh, I believe it's Martin Truex's. Tell me just a little bit about this helmet. It's got red, white, and blue. It's definitely got the Ozark, Missouri feeling, Bass Pro Shop. It, it, it's a, it's a good patriotic looking helmet. Yeah, it's his, uh, I think that's his Coke 600 helmet. So every, Ooh. every year Coke 600 guys, you know, they want to do something patriotic or, you know, Johnny Morris, he always, you know, is, Super the involved. owner of Bass Pro. That's that guy. Also from Springfield, Missouri. Good guy. Yeah. Um. Anyway, he's you know big military guy and all the support. You know, I think Martin ended up giving that helmet to uh, to the family that was on the windshield that weekend. So Very that stuff's nice. always cool. Like I said, the emotion and and all that that goes into that weekend is is super cool already. But to to paint a helmet like that's cool and. Everybody, I'd say, you know, walks in here and, and does their thing and wants to be creative. Martin is the one guy that, you know, I don't talk to or, you know, not that he chooses he's to. He's quiet. He's, he's quiet. quiet. But he just trusts me. He says, you know, put the fish on there and make it look cool. And I, that's that's what we do. And obviously that picture there, um, you know, I think we we do a pretty good job of making him look good on the racetrack. Yeah, we're going to keep up with show and tell because we have so much more to you. And we're going to sorry. Get, we're going to get to that. Okay. The next helmet Charlie's going to drop in here is you and Jeffrey Earnhardt. Now, this this helmet kind of gets me uh, yeah, right. a little bit. It, it, tell me, that, as I look at this helmet, and this is his grandfather. This is this is Jeffrey Earnhardt, and it, and he's got a picture of the great Dale Earnhardt Sr. and and the T-shirt says, "Damn, I'm good." Tell me about how this incredible helmet came about. Yeah. So every year Jeffrey will come in here and, um, you know, that's what he wants in the back of his helmet. He wants a portrait of, of Earnhardt, you know, senior. And, uh, we always try to find really cool pictures or really meaningful stuff, you know, stuff that when you, when you Google doesn't come up, you know, like we want, obviously that picture does, but, um, you know, we want something special to Jeffrey that way when he grabs his helmet, every time he puts it on, you know, that's what he's reminded of and that's what he thinks of. And, um, you know, it, it looks awesome. And that, that picture on there, it's kind of, it's kind of hard for me to be standing there giving it to him because Noel is the one that painted it and he's the one that's amazing, um, you know, at doing those portraits. He hand paints those, which is insane. I, I've for as many hours as I My have, Lord, uh, I don't know how he does it. I watch him do it every time he does a portrait, and I just there's no way I can ever do that. So, um, and a quick backstory on him: we went we went to the same high school, same same art teacher. I'll be darned. Yeah, he still he still lives in Missouri. He didn't make the trip out just yet, but. Um, he'll come out here and help us get caught up and, 
Um, you know what? We've been painting together for 20 some years. So being in that shadow of how good he is for that long is, uh, it's been tough, but, uh, you know, he's one of my best friends and I'm, I'm very honored that he comes to our shop and helps out. I want to remind everybody, uh, what great leaders do. And I can tell right now you're a great leader because you sound, you surround yourself with great friends that work for you, work with you. Uh, you keep giving the credit to all your artists. And I think that's fantastic. But you own the place. You put it together. Uh, you've done an incredible job. So let's take a breather and let, <laughs> let, let's brag on you for a little bit. Uh, and, and by the word breather, I mean, uh, you know, I know what it's like to smell that paint. Uh, we used to deliver newspapers. And uh, my brother, Rusty Wallace, Mike, myself, we, we had a newspaper delivery route. And, man, I, just, I got so tired of that ink smell. Oh man. Yeah. I'm like, I'm like, get me out of here. So this leads me to this. You probably got to get tired of painting hundreds and hundreds of helmet. My friend, you are a winning spotter. You spot, for, <laughs> you, you spot for Tyler Reddick on the road courses. Yeah. Uh, so Charlie, let's drop this picture in. Uh, this picture is, um, Tyler Reddick and you all winning the Brickyard. Tell me about you being a spotter. How did this come about? Yeah. So again, you know, all the way back to dirt racing, you know, <laughs> yeah. and network and, and meet people. I met, I met Tyler when he was like 13 years old, probably, you know, I raced, remember I, yeah, I, racing, I, racing yep. against him. And then, you know, he went on to race for, you know, Scotty Bloomquist and, um, you know, and then made it all the Bloomer. way over. So, yeah. So, when he moved here, he was just by himself, you know, young kids. So I did my best to kind of take him under my wing, you know, me and Candace both. And um, I said, Hey, I'm, I'm going to spot for you all the road courses and hopefully be a voice of reason for you and, you know, help you out. And he was, you know, all the way into like junior motorsports in that nine car, he was terrible at road courses. I mean, we had DNFs and, you know, I would ride to the airport with them and it would just be, I mean, not a good, you know how good racers are. They just get in their own head and it's, you know, when they are frustrated and can't figure stuff out, it is, it's, it's detrimental, you know? So, um, you know, to go from there, you know, not finishing races and being, you know, stuck in sand traps and whatever, um, you know, to winning the Brickyard, it was pretty cool experience. And I, another thing, I'm just so pumped. I got to do it with, you know, with Tyler and, um, my job is very easy when I spot for him because I give very little guidance and he's so fast. You're usually not even around cars after the restarts. So, um, you know, a couple of times like Coda last year, you know, doing turn one with all those restarts at the end. You won uh, Coda. Your, your heart rate goes up a little bit, but, you know, I'm pretty, I'm pretty even keel and I feel like uh, I do a decent job. And I've been, I've been with great primary spotters too, Derek Neeland and, and Nick Payne and, and, uh, I've learned a lot from them and just being able to do it and get out of the shop. Like I said, it kind of feeds the competition side that I used to get from dirt late mall racing and being around, you know, racing every weekend. So, um, it is nice. You know, I, I try to do it as many times as I can, but you know, there's only so many road courses in the, uh, in the year. I, I got to ask you this, um, uh, for me, uh, turn one at circuit of the Americas. I always say that's a goofy name. <laughs> We call it Coda sounds Coda. better than Circuit of the Americas. So when when you see the field coming at you, and I watched that race last year, uh, that turn one has got to be the most insane corner, a 90, 90 degree corner. They're coming at you. Straight up up a hill at you. And and you gotta be going, uh, yeah. uh, uh, uh. <laughs> what do you do? What do you uh, right? <laughs> Yeah. I mean, again, you just rely on just having a really good driver. That's what Tyler did. And it helps when you're on the front row, obviously. You know, it's a little easier to see because if you're like, you know, fifth row on back, it's a, it's a massacre. So, you know, my thing is just really letting them know when people are popping out and, yeah, you know, the big runs Important. And like that. But, you know, honestly, just Tyler and, you know, sometimes he'll clear himself with that, you know, the in-car camera that they have now. It's It's a lot easier than it used to be probably, but – you know, that he lets me go be a part of those weekends is, uh, it's a lot of fun. And just, you know, like I, like I said, I try to be a voice of reason for him and, and keep him calm in the car. If, if, if anything, cause I'm not, 
I'm not teaching him how to drive at all. He's he's natural talent on that. Okay, look, uh, I'm going to call bull crap a little bit. <laughs> I, I, I raced 905 NASCAR races. I think sometimes uh, I got to remind people this. So let me tell you how good you are. Uh, when I ran 905 races, and I'm not bragging on myself, sir, by calm down. I'm, you bragging, can. I'm bragging on you right now because a good spotter for me is somebody that is kind of my therapist. You know, yeah. hey, we're down a lap. You'll get it back, buddy. We're behind you. Because when we get in that race car and put that helmet on, you know, there's an old joke. We, it, it, you know, we're cut off. We're, we're on a little island by ourselves. And, and everything we do, we feel like is our fault. So don't sell yourself short. There's a reason Tyler Reddick has you doing what you're doing. It might, it might not be, hey, there's oil down there in turn one. It might not be that. It might not be, hey, car inside. It might be because you're a good dude. Yeah. And you, and you make him feel good. I think I think that helped, you know, switching teams last year of just, you know, having a familiar voice on the radio because I think, you know, everybody was new. Everybody was different, you know. So Coda yeah. being, you know, a month into the schedule, um, you know, I think I helped a little bit, hopefully. So, but, yeah, it's it's fun. I just love getting out of the shop and, and just doing different things. And um, it makes you nervous, you know, when they go green. And uh, I like that feeling of, like, doing something mm. different and out, out of the box and doing – you know, just different stuff. You know, I, I think if you're not scaring yourself a little bit, you know, you're living life pretty boring. So I like to, I like to have that rush and knowing that, you know, if I make the wrong calls here, you know, it, it could be catastrophic, but you know, just doing that and learning and, and something new and, and trying to be good at it, you know? Okay. We're going to, somebody should get mad at me because this cliche, we're going we're gonna to make a 180. It's fine. Charlie Marlowe's going to love this. Wherever you want to take it. So the uh, the great manager of the St. Louis Cardinals, he, he's not there anymore, but the great Tony La Russa wrote a book. And in that book, it said, I went to the ballpark every night to get my stomach tore out. In other words, you, you called it a rush. Yeah. But Tony La Russa and great athletes, that's what we do. We, we live to be miserable because – Whenever you want to win, there's there's a, a sense of misery required. That way, when you win, it's so much relief. Yep. Uh, and, and that is the balance. I, I'm miserable. I'm going to go to the track. I'm going to go to the baseball field. Oh, we won. Now it's just this unbelievable relief. Now, Charlie Marlowe is going to drop this picture in. Uh, and now this is this 180. Here we are looking at the great Hall of Fame pitcher for the St. Louis Cardinals, Adam Wainwright. And this was incredible. You painted Adam Wainwright, this beautiful guitar that he's holding up. Uh, that was an unbelievable moment for you. Tell me everything about this moment. How did you get there? How did you go about painting this guitar for the great Adam Wainwright? Yeah, I mean, again, it all goes back to networking, you know, not – not quite back to dirt racing, but just knowing the right people and people seeing your work and, and knowing, uh, you know, we can handle any job that's thrown at us. So when you get a, a call from the St. Louis Cardinals that say, hey, we got, you know, the greatest pitcher of all time retiring. We want to paint him a guitar because he's a, you know, country musician on the side. Um, it's pretty cool, you know, and I'm, I'm like, yeah, I'm, I'm in. I'm all for it. Let's take a break from painting helmets for a week and and paint this guitar for him. So uh, definitely a cool gift. Very, very unique. I put, um, you know, he's got a ton of kids. He, he adopted a few kids and he's a good man. Uh, he's one of the best guys I've ever, you know, ever been able to watch play the game, you know, just a good guy all, all around. Um, so on the back of that guitar, I contacted his wife, you know, behind his back a lot, like we did with your, you know, last helmet. Yeah. And I had, I had all of his kids write, you know, handwritten notes, personal notes to him. And, uh, I put like the Cardinal, carrying all those notes on the back so that when he flipped it over, it was like, Oh, this is a cool guitar. But, you know, again, bringing the emotion back to it and making it something really cool. And it was just, you know, notes of his kids just telling him how proud they were of him and, you know, something that he'll cherish a long time, I guess. Wow. That is pretty cool. Congratulations on that. Uh, you and I and your beautiful wife, Candace, we have sat in the Bush stadium seats together. 
Oh, we can't. Yeah, we saw you there. Yeah. yeah. Of course you would be at a Cardinals game. Yeah. Well, you know, remember, uh, we're going to have Erica Enders on Kenny Conversation, one of the greatest lady drag racers of all be time. Great. Yep. And uh, we were there. Uh, but you are a great Cardinal fan. So you, you kind of downplayed a little bit for me. I mean, you know, everybody knows that when you grow up in Missouri or Arkansas, you grew up with KMOX radio. So <laughs> You, you simply, I mean, for me, you just didn't paint a guitar. That had to be a, you had to give it, you were jacked up on Mountain Dew. You had to be. I mean. Yeah, it was awesome. And like I said, we got to go to the game and, <laughs> yeah. and he, you know, he sends me a video after the game of, you know, the whole guitar and, and thanking me. And uh, man, it was way cool to just get out of the NASCAR realm and like do something different and, you know, yeah. to be that big a deal. And then they give him the guitar and it's a big deal. Uh, and then it's followed by this puppy that they got for his kids and the, and the, and the little puppy just took the show. You know, I thought I was going to do this big guitar and it's going to be awesome. Um, you know, and then they, they give him a puppy and I just, you know, you can't, you can't win against a, a new puppy. Yeah. So it was all together. Well, I knew I'd pull more out of you. That What I got out of you was Adam sent you. So you'll say that video of Adam the rest of your life. I'm sure. Way cool. Yeah. yeah. And like I said, this, you know, a guy that, you kind of strive to be, you know, just a good hearted Midwest dude, you know? So, yeah. yeah. Uh, let's keep dropping some pictures in here, Charlie. The next one is uh, Joey Logano, a two time NASCAR cup champion. So here's this incredible picture. Uh, the flag is stuck in the car. He's wearing your helmet. His body is half out of the car. Tell me about uh, this picture of Joey Logano. Um, I'm not sure what, when this is, but it's just, uh, you know, I think I threw this in just cause it's again, go back to barely painting for anybody in the field. And now you have, you know, NASCAR champions and, and guys getting out with their helmets on after the race and just kind of being a small part of all that. Like I said, we don't make the car go any faster, but, um, I think it's just cool, you know, when that stuff happens and then, you know, to paint for your friends, you know, we're also clients and then watching them you know, succeed in the highest level that they can do and, and kind of being a small part of that, um, I think it's one of the coolest things to watch, you know, just uh, just knowing that they're trying as hard as they can and they're at the top of their game. Um, and then they they let you, you know, do the artwork on their helmet. Okay, so the next one, first of all, I got to say, Charlie is right now listening to everything, man, and everything. Charlie, I kind of like this. This is really, this is fun. This is the first show we've done like this. And we've done 45 Kenny conversations. So this one this is, is hard. Which I, I love them, by the way. They're the best interviews because you say whatever you want to say. And I, yeah. I yeah. love that part. Like, it's a raw interview because I tell people all the time, you know, these these interviews at the track where they want to tell you how good the Toyota ran and they want to <laughs> answer. I mean, that's great for TV. But, like, I want to hear the real story. And, like, you know, how much money does this guy get paid? How many, how many weekends a year does this pit crew guy go? Like I'm all for all those stories. And then yeah. I love the little, you know, I live 15 minutes from the shop. So the little 10 minute snips of, you know, little things you do, it's like, it's a perfect way to wake up and go to the shop in the morning. So I love this. I love everything about this show. And I hope you and Charlie keep it going forever. We, we will. And, and that's why we always say, listen to us on the way to work. Yep. And then turn it right back on. So let's, the, the next one is a lot of fun. I'm not going to steal your thunder. I have it all here, but tell me about this Justin Allgaier situation that started when his daughter was three years old. And Charlie, when he starts talking, drop these pictures in, uh, if you will. But go ahead, Greg, tell me yeah. about this. So Justin is, you know, one of my first first Xfinity drivers I painted for and his passion for art is just as much, if not more than, than my own, you know, I, if he wasn't driving a race car every weekend, he would probably be working in here, which, I mean, he was, he's been in here all last week, painting, uh, painting a helmet for his daughter for softball. So this is great. Yeah, I, I mean, it. it's just, it's the coolest. So when I paint a helmet for him, um, it is one of the hardest things to paint for. Cause he's, again, he's like, just make it look cool. But I know, he knows every part that goes into this, right? So I know he's not, not that he's going to nitpick it, but like if I miss something or I'm not putting the time or effort in, like he's going to see it, you know? So I'm like, 
I mean, I throw everything at it, but the kitchen sink when I paint one of his helmets, just because I know how much he's going to appreciate. He's it. one of you. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So, uh, when Harper turned three, we we're like, okay, let's let's have her paint a helmet. And again, one of these emotional deals where I said, don't tell Justin, we're going to do a playoff helmet. Have Harper come in, um, and she's going to paint this helmet. And the first one was like her putting her handprints on it, and um, you know, just three years old. She's yeah, three years old. Three. Yeah. <laughs> in my office. Yeah, that's the way we do it. So here. Oh yeah, look this at this. Is like her just you know wrote a little something. This is her tracing over. You know she couldn't write anything that you know being that small, but I did majority of it. That's awesome. Awesome. You know he loves it, right? So then the next year, you know she's got ideas. All right, let's let's hear the next idea, and then we we go from that and we go unicorns and rainbows and. Um, then it gets into like, well, just give her the airbrush and let her do her thing, you know, and, and every one of these, Justin doesn't know what it's going to look like. And then we film it all so that he can go back and watch it after he, after she gives him the helmet. So he knows it's coming now, but he has no idea what the, uh, the theme or, or anything's going to be. So, uh, I think just watching her soak it all up and, you know, if she walked in here tomorrow, I could just say, here's the tape and here's the paint. And she could probably paint it all herself now. So it's pretty cool to watch her from three years old, you know, to, I think she's 11 now, um, you know, just how much she's grown and, and wanted to take that art, you know, just like, just like Charlotte is, um, you know, she used to trace on her iPad just like that. So I think just kind of giving her, you know, the crayon box here and letting her go is, is pretty one, one of the coolest projects I do all year, honestly um and then to have them all lined up you know half of them are here and half of them are at justin's house and you know i think that's gonna be really special when uh you know she's in college years and you know he's retired and and he has all these helmets that are painted by harper i think it's gonna be really cool later on down the down the road and, and this is the reason that i wanted to have you on kenny conversation i knew that we would pull out all the emotions because we simply don't you know, listen, we understand what a helmet is. It's to save our lives. But I've always thought that a helmet is a reflection of your personality, who you are. Not, not, not all of them, because there's millions and millions of dollars involved on the backside or on the front side of these helmets. Your sponsor wants your helmet painted the way he wants it. But for the most part, uh, th we're, we're going to call another audible. We got two more helmets of mine. Um, Which so, one you know, well, I'm born and in, in, in raised in St. Louis, Missouri. This is one of my favorites of all time. Oh, this is a good one. That's one of my favorite ones, actually. Yeah. So, but listen, it's not about the blue note. It's about, look what you do with the city back here. Yeah, um, I love, it. I love the ice look and it's uh, the blue out in the sun is like one of the coolest blues. Yeah, it, it's an incredible helmet. Um, and then you and I we had a long talk and I want to bring this up the name Wallace right there. Uh, so I like the St. Louis blues up front here. What a great helmet. So, um, I, um, I, I just want to talk a little psychology a little bit. I said to you, I said, I want my name on the helmet and you and I kind of went back and forth. And then when I told you why I wanted my name on it, because I'm a big AJ Foyt fan yep. and uh, AJ greatest driver of all time. Uh, go ahead and argue comment below. <laughs> it's fine. But AJ had an orange helmet and on the side, it said AJ. And I said to myself, well, times change, but if a AJ's a badass, and if AJ Foyt can put his name on a helmet. Okay. If you paint a helmet, I could simply go, whose helmet's that? Oh, that's AJ's. Yeah. Tell me about our conversation. What was your thoughts about me and you going back and forth? Do Does any driver demand their name on the helmet? Or is that a thing now where people don't want their name on the helmet? Um, I think it goes back and forth, you know, and it's, it's like a thing with you. The more I paint your helmets, the more I know what you like and, and where you want things, you know, and, and now we put them across the forehead, you know, every, every one of them. So um, I think it's just a, a personal preference. You, you think that looks cool from AJ Foyt. And then, you know, Alex Bowman may, may say, no, I don't, I don't want to put my helmet, my name on it at all, you know? So, um, you know, I think it's just what you grew up liking and, you know, same with like, like anything, like, you know, this is the music I like, or this is, 
this is the colors I like on my helmet. You know, it's, it's just personal preference. And I, again, I think that's one of the coolest parts about our shop is, uh, you know, you can tell me that stuff and I'll remember it. And every time we do a helmet, you know, now, you know, this is the reason Kenny has it, you know, Wallace it's big on the forehead because he loves, uh, you know, AJ Fort and that's what he used to do. And, uh, and in the next helmet, uh, by the way, I'm doing a good job at this. I know. <laughs> Just this, juggling helmets. Yeah, yeah, and we, we put a lot of work into this because, uh, you know, you've done such a good job painting my helmets all these years. This next helmet is the reason I said, will you please put my name on the helmets? And to me, this is one of the most beautiful helmets you've ever painted for me. Uh, Missouri Tigers, look at this. I do like that one. Yeah. Oh, come on now, man. That baby is so awesome. Just looks mean. It's mean. It's badass. Uh, our Missouri Tigers, by the way, had a hell of a year. You know, uh, they're getting better. They outrun Ohio because Ohio said they didn't really try. Well, that's that's their fault, not mine. Yeah. But uh, by the way, calling an audible here. How stupid it was that for OSU to go well? And Charlie's an OSU dude. That's where he's from. But uh, we're we're, um, gonna, we're we're gonna take we're gonna put sorry. our players in the portal, and we're not gonna try. But let's go and embarrass ourselves. Charlie's yeah. wrong on that one. <laughs> I love you, Charlie. <laughs> I like Charlie until he's a boomer sooner. Now I I just don't so I don't know what to think about him. So, so this is the reason I I said, hey, whose helmet is this? So, you know, but that was that was the helmet that we decided to put my name on, and uh, I thought that just a good story. Yeah, um, no, I love it. It's cool. And it's just another personality piece of what I love about my job, you know? Right, exactly. Well, my friend, listen, uh, I cannot believe we've already been on doing this an hour. I know. But we're going to show one more picture. And Charlie, let's drop the picture in. Let's leave it up a little bit of all the helmets that he paints for in the NASCAR Cup Series. Xfinity series, truck series, and I especially, uh, Greg, like this lower one. Uh, team off axis. Look at this, Travis Pastrana. He's not. He's he's a pretty wild guy. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Brandon Shepard, B Shep. B Shep. Got to keep a couple dirt drivers on the list, you know. Chad Reed, uh, Cannon McIntosh. So, look at this. Uh, you know, Charlie's leaving it up right now, but. Buddy, when I look at this, this gives me goosebumps for you. You have a uh, coming out of that that high school, and and the janitor telling you to turn the lights out when you're done. When you look at all these names, and I'm looking at it right now, what what do you think? Um, <laughs> honestly, I mean, still, you know, got to pinch myself every once in a while to say, yeah, this is my job, you know. And and when you walk into the shop, it's like, oh. Yeah, we we own this place and we have made a pretty big name for ourselves in this in this sport. You know, when they think helmet paint, I feel like most of the time they think off axis, which is you know kind of what I set out to do. So, um, you know, not to conquer the world, I didn't set out to do that. I just I just wanted a good name in the sport, and uh, you know, a lot like Sam Bass, I don't think there's anything bad anyone has ever said about that guy. And uh, you know, kind of having him as a, a mentor when I moved here. That's the kind of life I wanted to live when I when I moved to North Carolina and, and to have good artwork and to, you know, kind of just be that guy anyone can stop in, you know, talk to or, or whatever, not just helmet paint, you know, just having a good atmosphere of creativity um, and be able to come in here and, and do whatever, whatever, whatever anyone may need that day, you know? Well, you, you are a wonderful soul. You're even better now that you got married. Uh, you two make a great pair. Look at that. Big time. Um, I got you to thank for that too. I meant I told Candace I was going to tell this story. So real quick. Yes. No, I want to hear you're, it. And, you're and the reason. Up. You were the reason. One, I you springboarded my career with helmet paint, but I also met my wife at your house, and we didn't like meet and talk that night. But Brittany, um, my the, youngest daughter, one of the nicest people I've ever met. Right? Like just the, that's everything nice thank about you. you, Brittany. Got you know right. Thank you. Um, so she would do these friends givings, you know, where it's just every, everyone in the industry moves here by themselves. Uh, you know, not a lot of people go home for the holidays and, and Brittany would be like, Hey, everyone brings something, you know, we're going to go to my parents and just enjoy, 
you know, a weekend at home and, and everybody. So there's a picture of us at your house and she is on one side and I am on the very opposite side. And uh, we have a good laugh at that. That's this like is a the, real smile. This is That's like the <laughs> that's first time we, we had met, um, you know, and then in, in your Fox uh, sports days, you would be gone on Sunday and Brittany would have these pool parties in the summer. And that's when I really started, you know, noticing Candace and, and talking to her. And I was like, man, this girl works in motorsports and she's, you know, pretty good looking. And, uh, you know, I think I, I want to hang out with her more. So um, took me a couple of years to, you know, ask her to marry me. And uh, I think it was worth the wait, I guess, for her because um, now she has a helmet painter as a husband. So, <laughs> Well, first of all, you are two of the most wonderful people. And uh, I want to thank you for being on Kenny Conversation. And I'll, we're going we're gonna to wrap it up a little bit like this. Uh, I'm listening. Because, be, because we are good friends and uh, everybody is hyper nowadays. Now, this, this is just something fun. This is something for everybody. If you've made it this far. So. Oh, my, my friend D Como has definitely made it this far because she loves that Mizzou helmet and she wants to see it. So okay, so we have at least two listeners still going. Okay, so but but this is fun. This is kind of for me too. Uh we are at 57 minutes. So now you know, now I've taught you <laughs> that you cannot do a Kenny conversation in three minutes. How the hell am it's I gonna too tough. How, yeah we're and we're not even through your career. We're only a quarter way through your career. So when we do these hour and 40 minute conversations with somebody twice your age, John Force, oh. Dale Jr., Rusty Wallace. So I, if anything, has your dear friend taught you anything? Are you going to put up for me? We're 57 minutes. Now you see how fast it goes? Dude, it it goes by so quick. You walk in here, so oh, oh, I win! I win! I can't, I can't imagine, you know, interviewing somebody like Rusty who has a million stories. But as long as I can remember them all, you know, have that, I'll listen all day. Yeah, well, it's a joke uh, because Kenny conversation doesn't happen without guys like you. But I do have my hyper friends that are in their twenties. Herman, I can hardly make it past two minutes. I'm like, buddy. Hello, goodbye. That's it. <laughs> so uh, listen, Greg, uh, you're a wonderful friend. Uh, this has been a different Kenny conversation. It's been show and tell. Uh, thank you for sending me these pictures. Uh, I asked you to do it. You did it. It really blended the story so good. Uh, and listen, everybody, this is where we come to an end. You listen and be inspired by the great Greg Stump the owner of Off Access Paint. How, how do you know what you want to do in life? And this story is incredible. So listen to this in podcast. We're in iTunes. We're in Spotify. Listen on your way to work. Listen on your way back home. And then it's so long, the next day you're going to listen to it again on the way to work. And you probably fall way. asleep listening to me. I don't, I don't blame you. You're incredible. <laughs> thank, thank you so much. Absolutely, brother. Thank you for having me on and uh, stop in the shop anytime you're in North Carolina. I'll be back. And oh, by the way, hold on, Charlie. Charlie, let's not let's let's not close shop quite yet. I have been waiting for my 2024 dirt racing helmet. So this is where Charlie. Oh is, yeah, we got the we got it oh, designed up, Charlie. Yeah. Let's drop the sketch in of my new helmet. This is what Greg sends people. I like my new helmet design. And you said, what are you going to do on it for me? You're going to put my name on it. I have Wallace across the thread. <laughs> they got to know what's coming up behind them. All right. Well, listen, um, next up on Kenny Conversation is whoever it's going to be. We have Erica Enders. We have everybody lined up in the pipeline. And uh, until then, everybody, we'll see you next time.